Hey everyone, this is James from Anemone Aquascape Gallery. Today I'm going to be building this 90p aquarium, which has kind of been going back and forth between different layouts. For this build, my plan is to make kind of a island scape using Hakai stone. And one of the biggest challenges for me is trying to figure out how to set the first stone. Um, not from a design or visual aspect, that's actually rather simple for me, but more in the way of practically getting height out of the stone. I tend to use lava stones or just soil to try to elevate the stone. Um, an important concept in the design of a layout is trying to make sure that you're using every aspect of your aquarium, meaning if your hardscape is only on the lower third or half of the aquarium, you have the entire top half of the design that's not being utilized in any way. So with this stone, I try to use the lava stones underneath it to try to elevate the height. And I got it to about two thirds, three quarters of the way up, which I think is suitable enough. When building Iwagumi layouts, the bigger challenge for me is trying to make sure that the supporting stones create a cohesive layout. Um, the placement of the first stone is usually the most simple for me. As I'm building these other stones and trying to create this island idea that I was coming up with, I realized that what I was starting to build was just not working at all. Um, essentially it was very one-dimensional in that there's two sets of stones all in the middle of the aquarium in terms of the depth and it's almost just like a straight horizontal line so i ended up making some tweaks to it and it's crazy how just a little bit of change in a few stones can kind of change the entire um, feeling of it and the entire composition of it so after i started moving some stones forward and backwards i felt like I was getting more of what I was looking for. For this aquarium, since I didn't have extra filter media that I could seed the filter with, I have to cycle the tank. And so what I decided to do was the popular dark start method. Even though this hardscape is simpler than some of the other aquariums that I've been setting up lately, one of the more interesting plan, uh, plans that I have for this tank is my usage of plants. And so I had some plants that I was planning to reuse including um, the dwarf hair grass from my 60p aquarium. I always have some extra crypt parva that I'm willing to throw into any tank. And I also have a tiger lotus too. Um, and then I purchased some ADA plants to try out some new plants that I haven't really used before. Since I have so many aquariums and I try to reuse plants as much as I can, I feel like it stops me from having the opportunity to try out different plants. So that was one thing that I was really excited about. By doing this dark start method, one of the things I didn't realize is that it would be very difficult to drain the tank all the way down. Um, if you've seen my videos before, you may know that my favorite preference for planting is planting in completely dry soil. And I always find that it's more difficult for me to try to plant when there's some water in the aquarium. For me though, I'd rather have the water filled up and then plant into it rather than the soil itself being moist. I just find that when I put the tweezers into the soil, it's always picking up soil with it and it just slows down the process of planting for me. So the game plan was to try and raise the level of the water as I continue planting the aquarium.
Originally, I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough of the dwarf hair grass. I had to go through it really carefully because I noticed from my 60p there was so much Ricardia that had gotten into the carpet of the hair grass, and I wanted to try to prevent any Ricardia from getting into this aquarium. So even though I probably pulled out maybe three times as much of this hair grass, a lot of it had to go to waste because I just didn't want to risk uh, invasive plants getting into this aquarium. Since it'll be my first time keeping some of these plants, I don't know how they're all going to grow within my aquarium. So for example, I'm quite worried about my Eleocaris montevidensis. Um, I think it's going to probably grow much longer than I want it to, and I don't know if by doing a trimming on it, it's going to be suitable for this aquarium. So if there's any like buyer's remorse on any of these plants, it's probably that one, but I'm willing to let it grow and see how it works. And if it ends up overwhelming the layout, I might just replace it with, I don't know, Eleocaris aticularis, the taller type, for example. There are going to be taller crypts in the background, as you might have seen. So there's definitely going to be a, a more, I guess, wild and um, plant-heavy layout than my usual Iwagumis. In regards to the plants, another thing that I'm considering is how these plants are going to um, mesh in with one another. So for example, in the foreground, I have the Eleocaris pusilla, the shorter type, and it's mixed somewhat with Helanthium tenilum. The Helanthium is kind of more placed in the rock area while the hair grass is more in the foreground. But they both send out a lot of runners and I can not imagine that they're probably going to mix with each other at some point. So something I think about is how much I want to interfere with that and try to control where they grow versus just letting them kind of do their own thing. Um, also in the back there's multiple types of crypts that um, will mix with the Eleocaris montevidensis and you know I'm not so sure how those are going to mix with each other too. So I think for this tank more than the other ones it's more of kind of an experiment to see how everything grows. Let me know what you all think of this aquarium. I think out of all the aquariums I have in the gallery, I'm most excited to see how this one develops, just because I don't know how it's going to develop exactly. Um, if you have any thoughts about these plants that, and you've had experience growing them, I'm happy to hear what your thoughts are on these plants or the hardscape or this layout in general. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.